Hi, I want to tell you something about life by telling you something about death. It was the old German philosopher Martin Heidegger, whom I have mentioned quite often in my previous videos, is that he believed that death was the end of all opportunity. And in a way, that makes a lot of sense. As you grow older, there are fewer and fewer activities that you can engage in. Try learning to ski at 96 years old. Or try learning another language when you're 99 years old. I didn't say it's impossible to do it, but you notice that it will be harder to do it. Your body uh, over 80 is going to be quite brittle. Hiking in the woods is going to be difficult. You might break your ankles. And so as we go older, it becomes more difficult to learn new things. There are more activities that we can no longer do. Until we reach the end of the line, death, the end of all opportunity, the end of all choices and activities, uh, the end of our personal entropy, for example. But in another way, I disagree with Martin Heidegger. And I have come to see death not merely as the end of all opportunity, but as the only opportunity, the only opportunity to live. You see, if you live life in a different manner, where you see life not as a road that must come to a stop at a certain point, but rather you see life as this intense force that you may use to orchestrate your perfect death, then death all of a sudden is the one opportunity to live. If you ask yourself this different question, how do I want to die? Or, how do I want to live my life to achieve my perfect death? This requires you, first and foremost, to stop being afraid of the concept of death. You shouldn't see death as the end of the road, but rather as your first beginning. A new beginning that you will consciously experience, unlike your birth. Most people, I assume, do not remember their birth. We have no conscious registration of our birth. But death can be a new kind of birth where we consciously register why we are dying and what we did to achieve it. I know this sounds very bizarre to most of you, but let me give you some examples here. If I were to live life in a very shy manner, where whenever a teacher told me to sit still in my chair for eight hours and I would comply, or if uh, any other kind of official or person in a power position or whoever would tell me what to do and I simply do it. I would never question their motives. I would simply make my own life uh, subordinate to their demands. If I were to live life in that manner, did I really live? See, if you live life as a... Uh, official, a government official, or as a politician, or a journalist, or an employee, and you always allow people higher up in the hierarchy to tell you what to do, to tell you how to live, then you haven't lived. Then it makes sense for you to see life as a road. You're sitting life out. You're sitting it out as though life were a conviction, a prison sentence. You just have to wait it out. And to wait for the end to come to you rather than for you to storm at the end, to try to break it apart. Do you see the difference now? Death as the only opportunity to live means you are not going to shy away from death. You accept that it is inevitable. You accept that it's going to happen. You don't quite know when it will happen. But here you have something resting in your own hands that you can use as a tool to design your life to achieve a better kind of death. Why would you want to die an employee working for a boss, having never really lived because you were always so afraid of death that you tried everything you could do to avoid it? Imagine you're this kind of person who wants to eat health food. Why? Because you want to live 20 years longer. So you're not eating health food so you can fight harder and win more. Instead of fearing the end so much that you constantly have your foot on the brakes because you're afraid of crashing into that wall at the end. Imagine death rather being a cliff. 
And you all know what to do when your car is approaching a cliff and you can't escape it. You all know what to do. You hit the gas. And you fly. Because if you would choose that track, the track of fighting harder, you all of a sudden will learn that life can be lived in a far more intense manner than you could possibly imagine. Imagine you would overcome your fear of death and the fear of pain and torture that perhaps precede your death. If you stop being afraid of these things, now look at the power you have to live life in a much more extraordinary manner. Now you can face those insurmountable setbacks without flinching. You can face the end boss with a big fat smile on your face. As the old warriors used to say, they were here on earth to die a great death. The greater the death, the more glory in the afterlife. The old Germanic peoples, among them the males, the fighting males, they used to believe that if they died young, they would be reborn in a healthy manner. And if they died old and crippled, they would be reborn as a crippled baby. Who would want that? And if you imagine it this way, that you can choose to be the greatest warrior in this life and in the next by no longer fearing death, then you are already in heaven. What are you waiting for?